So I'll, I'll, I'll talk about the package I've been working with other collaborators that I'll mention later. Um, so it is about helping students explore the multiverse. And I'm not going to show the movie, but I uh, will talk about the multiverse analysis. And I will start with an example. And hopefully, uh, we'll use the example to kind of demonstrate how the package is designed to help students learn multiverse analysis. So the, the example starts with a question about um, uh, sort of this racial bias or skin color bias towards soccer players among um, the referees. Do they give out more red cards? That was the question that was actually asked by a, a group of um, analysts. They actually, the authors actually did a cross-sourcing of this data analysis. And there was a group of teams that, that worked on the same set of data and they came up with different analysis. So they, they, um, just very quick overview. I'm not going to go into the details. The data consists of players. It was actually player referee um, pair. And for each pair um, that played in 20, uh, 2012, 2013 in, in England, France, and Spain, um, and how, with how many cards they got, red cards they received versus how many games they played among uh, uh, along with other colleagues. And I will... Um, and there was uh, information on the skin tone of each players. Um, and I'll just focus on the question of which covariates to include in this data analysis. In this analysis. So um, I'll just take walk through this particular example on position. So in, in, in soccer, uh, if you're familiar with soccer, you know, there are 11 players per team and they have specific roles and depending on the roles, uh, individual roles, um, they may have uh, different playing style, playing behavior, and you might get red, you, you're more likely to get a red card versus other players. And and uh, an analysis may come in and say, hey, we could probably just group all the fielders that are running around and kicking the ball versus the goalkeeper who is kind of confined this small area who is who can use a hand and and kind of protect it from other players or you can also do a, a bit of a group grouping in the fielders you know defensive field players versus the midfielders versus the attackers so there's more than one way to use this information on position and and position is not the only one that you you might have different opinions so you might want to include the information on each player's size, you might decide to use their height, we might decide to use their weight, and some may decide to use both because it, they, um, you might have arguments with uh, for that. And you might decide to use the country they're playing, the, the league they're playing in. And, and I do have Germany in there. I don't follow soccer closely, but I, I, I thought Germany is in the kind of same level of you know league in terms of soccer. But, I just included there in, in visualization. So, but once you're done with the analysis, typically you report a single path of analysis and you report, you kind of hide all this different decision path you took and, and that kind of hides your work. And so what multiverse analysis suggests as at least the, the, what the original author suggests is that you want to perform all different uh, combination of these decision paths at least the reasonable ones, and you want to report those two. And and this is you know this this is uh, this sounds reasonable. This sounds like really cool. Uh, but it, going back to this example, the 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 uh, there is an article in in on five thirty eight, and this is a, just a figure that I took from their article. There were twenty nine teams, and they all came up with different analysis and and they ended up ended up with different um effect sizes different results some even uh not statistically significant if you look at the chart here but some even came up in the opposite direction in terms of the effect size effect uh bank reduction so and this is and remember each team only consider only one path but if you consider all the different combinations, you 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 can imagine there's more than twenty six. In in the simple example I just I just demonstrated, including um, three different ways of 
coding positions and including or not including that. So there are four options for the position. And like uh, likewise, for size, there are three ways. And for country, there are two ways. And that's already 32 different analysis. And if you're teaching this to this concept of data multiverse analysis to your students and undergraduate level, you will put them in, you know, panic mode. You know, you 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 ask them to build one mo one model. They're already panicking. They don't know R. They, you know, they're just learning R. They're just learning tidyverse. You ask them to you know conduct thirty two or even like hundred or few hundred. You know, it it, it is complex. It is difficult. So ex exploring multiverse. It's not just for students, but you know, if you give me a data set and ask me to conduct all possible um, paths that I can think of, that is that can. Um, cause some panic going. So that's why we, uh, that's where we introduced the package called, called Embers. Uh, it's called Embers because there is a package called Multiverse, which this package is actually built on. Our package extends the, the Multiverse package. So the Multiverse package actually um, handles all the computations, all, all, all the hard work. And I, I just do the making it look easy. Uh, <laughs> so I did work with a lot, along with collaborators. So Haoda and Mingwei, there were students at U of T. Uh, they, they're now in, uh, studying elsewhere. Nathan and Fanny, they actually, they, they're the ones who, they, who initiated this project, uh, who asked me to work on this and, and they've been great um, supervisors. So for the package, uh, I, I, want, I want to highlight these three um, sort of the design principles or the objectives that that we focused on so we wanted to build a package that was that that provided systematic syntax and uh, also that is familiar for students that's learning R and tidyverse and that also serve as an interactive exploration tool so I'll, I'll just quickly highlight how we did it so on the right this is what you might so if you are a tidyverse user and this is just a premise we're gonna work with. You, you teach students, you teach students with R and tidyverse. So, so assume you're you know how to use tidyverse, and you know for the the position options, you create three different variables uh, uh, th or two additional columns for the groupings. And then for each of the models you came up with, you you know you need to specify the model statements. And if you're really good you'll put or if you're okay with r you put them in a list and you do some kind of apply function to fit all these models but this is already a very long um, chunk of codes so with the embers so the first thing we wanted to do to build a systematic syntax we, we did design the syntax around the decision points so we call this branch the is each decision points branch we had different opinions about the terminology, but I think we, you know, we ended up with branch. So, so for the position alternative, this branch it doesn't really create. Um, you will see what it does and later, but it doesn't really create very um, uh, add columns to a single data set. We'll we'll see what it does later, but you can we code the decision of looking at this position in different ways. We can use it as is, or we can group. Uh, we can group them in two ways: uh, further filters versus goalkeepers, or group them in uh, fil group the filters in three different groups. And what that enables, what they where that makes a difference is that it really makes um, the following code a lot more concise. So I don't have to copy paste and change the position variable to a different name. I just I just say. Hey, I do have position alternative. I already coded the different alternative. It's it's a single decision point, and we I just coded uh, with using that single name. So that that does reduce the the number of lines code you need. And this is again, this is a relatively simple example. If you had more decision points, you, you can imagine can the reduction will be even more dra dramatic. And once you're done specifying all the models, the the uh, all the decisions, we do we create the um, multiverse or the embers object with uh, the data set we are working with, and we add these 
decision points, and then we execute. So once we add the all the decision points, the sort of the 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 multiplexing or the, all the combinatory work is done automatically by the package. So there's no need to say model one, two, three, all the way to 36, 32, or am I at 32, or do I have to only consider 28 and go back and check your um, logic? So, so I will argue that actually leads to um, a, pack, uh, a syntax that's less prone to errors. You have, let, you have less lines of codes to work with, and they are, the, the codes are actually systematic. So you, you know, uh, compared to copy pasting approach, you 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 are less likely to make errors. So, so that was the first kind of the design objective, and the second one is just building a, um, a um, syntax that's familiar for these students. Uh, and we're talking about students that are in undergraduate, second, more third, fourth year, maybe second year students who you know who've used R and Tidyverse for maybe a year or so. So we we want to minimize the the new syntax that we introduce to them. So we do try to stick to the syntax of tidyverse, the, the grammar of tidyverse. So we do say mutate branch, and we we also have filter branch. So we, we try to stick to uh, and with even within within each mutate branch, the way you write these uh, different uh, decision options is very close to how you write in a typical mutate or tidyverse uh, de deployer grammar. But we, we are a little more forgiving and that you don't have to give the names for each option always, but it, it is helpful to track if you do. Here for the size, I didn't give the names. So there's less to learn if for those that are already run, learning R and tidyverse. Uh, lastly, um, so we did want to um, provide a set of interactive exploit exploration tools. And these are some of the functions um, that we provide. Extract will extract all the columns or the data after the, the multiplexing is done. So after all the uh, expanding the data into different uh, combinators. So it, it, the output is just a regular table that you everyone's familiar with, and you can do you know group by and summarize. You can explore it. You can inspect what the effect was. So here you see the universe column. So you have thirty two universes. Hopefully, oh, you will have thirty two, <laughs> and you, you can do summarize and you can further summarize and create um, visualizations and so on to inspect what what the how the decisions make difference in, in the underlying data and the multiverse tree uh so we we, we are providing this to um uh show the, the decision points as a tree structure um here i you can actually i i could i could uh um uh expand the tree for all decisions without this option or just focus on particular branches that you you uh, created uh, and there there are other options you can play around with and again this outputs a ggplot or put in in a, more specifically a ggraph um, object so you can further customize it just the aesthetics um, yeah and that, that actually helps uh, here you will see that for for this particular model specification piece of, we do, we're not using the position variable. It doesn't really make sense to expand all uh, three options. So that, that's all handled um, by conditioning it in our package. So that you can actually check uh, that you are not expanding the multiverse unnecessarily, or you are not creating uh, unreasonable path based on these decisions, because some of these decisions would not be compatible. And lastly, we we do um, provide this function called spec curve or specification curve that's adopted from Simonson, Simons and Nelson's paper. So the idea is we want to um, 
plot the estimates along with the confidence intervals, and we want to see what our decisions were and if there was any pattern. And in our package, we do um, um, offer a, a few options to order these these uh, estimates. So in this particular example, I'm ordering by the formula branch or the mo model specification branch. So you can see how it's ordered by the you know country, no coverage. So it, if you see a pattern, you you notice oh this particular decision actually made a difference here. I don't think it's as obvious, but and we also order by the estimates. And if we had um, significant versus non-significant, those will be also separated. So some of these features are still, uh, yeah, some of these features are still experimental. And, and um, I would say the spec curve, I probably want to work for more. It's, it doesn't, currently it doesn't output a, uh, unlike the multiverse tree, where it 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 outputs the an, an editable or more customizable object spec curve because it's it's a two two plots um, concatenated together. I I don't think it's easily editable after this. So I, I want to create something that's that works just like multiverse tree where you can edit further. So yeah, that that's that's a quick summary. Hopefully, I didn't take more than ten minutes. Uh, uh, and again, thank thank you uh, all for being here. Thanks to Ruan and thanks to all uh, my collaborators. Uh, the package, there is a version on CRAN. Um, uh, the version on CRAN would not do all the things that I showed you here because some of these um, updates I made while making this uh, slide, the presentation, it was a, actually a good opportunity to look back and, and make more updates. Uh, yeah, and if you are interested, all the codes and the slides are available on GitHub as well. Thank you.